coalition politics in Nepal increasingly resembles the game of musical chairs. In Kathmandu 2, it is the same cast of characters who have been taking turns for nearly two decades. The tragedy is that scant attention is paid to the critical issues, unemployment, national indebtedness, and development challenges. A coalition collapses again. The last coalition government formed in December after the elections last November has lasted just two months. It was stitched together by UML leader K.P. Sharma Oli with the idea of breaking away the Maoists by prom- promising the prime ministership to their leader Pushpa Kamal Dahal Prachand. Mr. Prachand had formed an alliance with Mr. Oli in 2018 that broke down in 2020. After a series of decisions by Mr. Oli, he was then Prime Minister, seeking to marginalize Prachanda and other senior leaders. Later, Prachanda and the Madhav Nepal led break, breakaway faction of UML, rechristened as the CPN Unified Socialist, joined with the Nepali Congress NC and formed an electoral alliance in 2022. The Nepali Congress emerged as the largest party with 89 seats, the house strength is 275, and Maoists were a distant third with 32. Power-sharing talks collapsed because Prachandal insisted on becoming Prime Minister first. Knowing Prachandal's weakness, Mr. Oli made him an offer he could not refuse. On December 26, Mr. Prachanda was sworn in as Prime Minister and in return he assured support to the UML for the post of House Speaker and President. Six other parties had joined the coalition. These included disparate groups such as the Rashtra Prajatantra Party, 14 seats that espouses a pro-monarchy and a pro-Hindutva agenda and the newly created Swatantrata Party 20 seats, consisting of professionals who re- professed disenchantment with the rampant opportunism in traditional Nepali politics. However, both were tempted with offers of deputy prime ministers, ministerships, and Prachanda's cabinet had four deputy prime ministers, one each from the Maoists, UML, RSP, and RPP. Within weeks, Prachanda started Chuffing as Mr. Oli reverted to his old autocratic ways of calling the shots from behind the scenes, realizing that with the Oli nominees as president and speaker, he could easily be outmaneuvered. Prachanda reached out to the NC. Anticipating this, NC had voted in support of Prachanda in the confidence vote on January 10, announcing that it had done so in the interests of national consensus governance that could provide stability. Prachanda saw his opportunity to return the favor by espousing the idea of a national consensus presidency and promised support to the NC's candidate Ram Chandra Paudel. The UML called it a betrayal and pulled out of the coalition. However, other than the RPP, the other members of the only led coalition declined to follow, announcing their support for Paudel's candidature. Presidential elections. The Election Commission has announced that presidential elections will be held on March 9, followed by elections for the vice president on March 17. Since the code of conduct will be in effect till March 19, no overt political activity is possible. Given that Mr. Prashanda is now heading a minority government with 16 vacant cabinet positions, power sharing talks will ad- will gain momentum, though the final outcome will remain a matter of speculation. Mr. Prachanda has still month end to seek a fresh vote of confidence. Once Mr. Powdell is elected, the NC is likely to throw its weight behind Prachanda. The RFP Janta Samajwadi Party 12 seats, Janmat Party 6 seats and the Nagrik Unmukti Party 3 seats earlier with the Oli coalition have switched their support to Mr. Powdell in Mr. Powdell. In addition, NC coalition members, the Lok Tantrik Samajbadi Party 4 seats, CPN US 10 seats, and Rashtriya Jan Morcha 1 seat will also support Mr. Powdell. The UML has put up former Speaker Subhas Nembang as its presidential candidate. 
the electoral college for these elections is made up of 275 members of the house of representatives and the 59 members of the national assembly together with 550 members of the seven provincial assemblies with votes being weighted given the current assurance of support mr Pardell will win with nearly three-fourths of the electoral college in the election for the vice president it appears that the jsp candidate will obtain the coalition backing prachanda's real challenge will emerge the following week Managing negotiations between the competing demands of the NC and these seven parties will not be easy. This is his third stint as Prime Minister. His first time in 2008 was the only time he came to power on the basis of his electoral victory but his coalition collapsed in less than a year because he failed to make the transition from being Comrade Prashanda to an elected leader. The second and third times have been purely opportunistic gambles of teaming up with Oli and then getting burned. After the second time, he even navely, em navely merged his party with the UML in 2018. Fortunately for him, the Supreme Court annulled the merger in 2021, giving him a political lifeline. However, he, candid he candidly admit admits to being easily tempted. On the other hand, NC leader Sher Bahadur Deoba, nearly 78 and a five-time Prime Minister, is convinced that he should be Prime Minister again. Hopefully, the events of last two months should have a sobering influence on both because while Deoba's intransigence led to the breakdown of talks, okay, let me repronounce this word. Intransigence, okay, led to the breakdown of talks in December. Prachanda should realize that his bromance with Mr. Oli will always be short lived. The foreign hand. Since 2008, when Nepal declared a republic, the game of political musical chairs has been a regular phenomenon. In 15 years, Nepal has had three NC prime ministers, GP Koirala. Sushil Koirala and Sher Bahadur Deuba twice. Two Maoist Prime Ministers, Prachanda, now thrice, and Baburam Bhattarai. Three UML Prime Ministers, Madhav Nepal, Jhala Nath Khanal, and KP Oli twice, and a Chief Justice as caretaker Prime Minister in 2013. It is the resulting this enchantment of the electorate that led to new political forces in 2022 elections. Normally, it is during these rounds of musical chairs that Nepali politicians start wearing their nationalist colors by looking for the convenient scapegoat of the foreign hand. While India has often been blamed, Jean has played a visible hand in seeking to keep a united communist front but has failed to find a compromise between Uli's egoistical tendencies and Prashanda's opportunistic impulses. In recent years, India has retrieved some lost ground by focusing on project implementation such as the Jainagar Bardi Bardibas Railway and the Motihari Amlekh Ganj oil pipe oil pipeline sorry power export from Nepal has picked up the agreement for 364 megawatt signed in June has yielded export earnings of okay I have lost wait a minute uh, such as the Jayanagar Bharti Baz railway and the Motihari Amlekh Ganj oil pipeline Power export from Nepal has picked up. The agreement for 364 metric weight. What is this MW signed in June has yielded export earning of dollar 60 million in 2012. While looking at increasing power transmission on the 400 kV Muzaffarpur Dhalkewar line to 800 MW, the 900 MW Arun 3 is expected to be 
operational later in 2023. Meanwhile, some of the high-profile infrastructure projects by Chin have generated concerns about their economic vi viability and long-term debt implications. A good neighborhood first policy for India is to focus on connectivity and development while letting the Nepali politicians continue with their game of musical chairs.